Hello and welcome. This is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician. Going to go over the equity futures, equity index futures market for you on this Sunday afternoon. And taking a look at the chart that you're seeing right now, basically we're looking at all four of those markets compared from the lows here on October 13th. Since then, we've been rallying up quite strongly, had a little bit of a setback, but overall still pretty bullish. I wanted to bring this up because it shows you that the NASDAQ happens to be the leading index follow them by the Russell, the S&P, and the laggard here is the Dow. That seems to be the weakest index. So we'll take a look first at the NASDAQ, since that happens to be our leader to see which way it's going to go and when it might end. Looking at the daily chart, uh, first things first, on our previous impulse up, we actually duplicated that move 100%. You can see kind of a, a light purple line there. That was the 100% duplication of the preceding impulse, which led to the pullback in price. Then, uh, as we did our pullback, we've actually corrected 50%. You see a large candle in the same direction we're already traveling. That is usually the novices jumping in late. Usually means it might be the end of the move. However, if we are going to continue down further, typically the retracement you get for that novice candle is to the open of that candle. So whatever the open of that day happens to be, that would have been Wednesday of last week, that would be the, uh, the turning point once again. Although it looks like we hit that, fell a little bit. I don't know if we're going to continue this Sunday. It looks as though we're overall we're so, still somewhat bullish. What we'll have to watch for here on the daily chart is if we can make uh, another high in price, we need to make a high on the RSI as well. If we fail to make a new high on the RSI, when we make a high in price, that'd be what's called a negative divergence, and that would cause the prices to fall back down, maybe form a um, double top formation, an M formation. If not, we should be able to run up at least to the 16,622.50 on the current bounce. So just something to keep in mind, a few things to keep in mind as we're watching these markets. As we move up, look to see if the momentum's there. If the momentum's there, we just keep continuing. If it's not there, we're going to pull back. Onto the four-hour time frame, you can see that we haven't moved above 60 on the RSI as we rallied up. We also didn't make a new high yet. So we've made higher lows, and on this recent low that we had on Friday, we were not below 40 on the RSI. That's very bullish but you need the follow through. We didn't get the follow through either. That follow through would have been a move above 60 on the RSI. And as you can see, we made a high in price, but couldn't do that. So overall, still a little bit of weakness, a little bit of indecision going on here. And we need to resolve this one way or the other. Obviously, if we can break to a fresh low, we're gonna continue down through the demand zone. So watch for, again, if we can break above 60, we'll continue to move to the upside and march upwards. If we break the low from this candle, which is right around 16,000, then uh, we'll retest this zone, which we've already tested once, the 15,897. So we could go a little deeper before a bounce there. If we go to that zone and the RSI is below 40, then we're likely to break down and continue lower. But overall, this is looking still pretty bullish for the market. Moving down to the 60 minute time frame, we've got a little bit of a correction coming. Before we make another high, we have a negative divergence, as you can see, where prices made the higher high, the indicator made the lower high. So that's a little bit, a little bit of a pullback. This is not telling us we're gonna drop very far. It's just a pullback we should expect in price. That'll give you an opportunity to possibly buy for another rally. I wouldn't be surprised to see it turn right in this little overlap of these two candles, right around 16, 120, 16, now it's probably about 16, 110. That's what we're looking at right there. We can actually break this down even smaller. And unfortunately on the 15 minute chart, we got the negative divergence there again, which is indicating a little bit of a pullback. Our nearest demand zone, however, so our nearest demand zone is around the 16,071, even though we had the overlap a little bit higher there. So watch for a bit of a pullback on Sunday evening. We'll probably rally again on Monday morning though. Turning our attention over to the Russell, which was the second strongest market, we had pretty much the same scenario here. We had the previous rally duplicated on the measure move. We've had a correction back down. It's a weak correction. We've only gone down 38.2% compared to the NASDAQ 50% on the daily chart. So we could be done with this retracement. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Obviously, if we break out to another high, we need to have the same or more momentum, really, on the RSI. Should we meet these prior highs at about... 2460 and have a lower high on the RSI, then we're likely to have a failure in a double top formation that could bring us right back down to 2300. So keep an eye out for that. We need that momentum to keep going. On the four hour time frame, we've had a little bit of a pullback already. 
and we stayed in bullish territory. So this is suggesting that we should be able to continue to go higher and we're just consolidating sideways right now. Look for a possible breakout on Sunday up to the 2500 level or if we do see a little bit of weakness, the pullback to 2362 would actually be a buy opportunity as long as we stay above 40 on the RSI as we pull back. Going down the 60 minute chart, you can see we flatlined up against that 60 minute supply zone. We're still peaking above 60, so we got plenty of bullish momentum here where it doesn't look like it wants to pull back too much. But uh, again, we'll see what happens on that bigger time frame because it's suggesting a slight pullback before we go higher again. And on the 15 minute, unfortunately, nothing really there to show us anything. I think we're going to stick with that four hour zone as the buying opportunity. That seems to be the, uh, the best one. And just kind of keep an eye on what's going on both here and on the NASDAQ for the opportunities to go long. Looking at the ES, we've also made a measured move. This one moved a little bit further, moved, or actually less, I'm sorry, not as far. far. The others were 100% duplication. This was only 61.8%. We've had our retracement. We'll see if that's gonna be the end of the retracement or if we're gonna to continue to go further down. We do have a demand at 45.65, but it's really up to the NASDAQ and the Russell what happens. Since they're leading to the upside, those will be the ones that'll tell us when we're gonna turn back down or continue to go higher because they're pulling everything up. We did bounce off of the 240 minute demand zone, but we stayed above 40, which is bullish on the RSI. So uh, prices continue to move higher. We have higher lows, higher highs. We did go above 60, which is bullish as well. So I would suggest that we're likely to see more continuation to the upside. But again, it comes down to what happened with the what's happening with the NASDAQ to let us know what's going to happen here, most likely. If we do pull back, we can go a little deeper, but there's still a lot of buying pressure in the 46 and a quarter zone here, as well as 45.75 or 45.78. Down on the 60 minute chart, we obviously broke a downtrend and show a lot of bullishness. We tried to go below 40 and could not multiple times. So that tells us we're in a bullish trend here on the 60 minute time frame. And therefore, if we get some sort of a pullback on the 15 minute chart, there will actually be some buying opportunities. You can see that we're currently retracing on this 15 minute time frame. And as we retrace, there's Fibonacci retracement as well as a demand zone that would give you a great opportunity to go along at 46.78 and a quarter with the stop below 46.75. Target number one would be 46.87 and a quarter. Target two, basically just under 4,700. And finally, the weekend next, looking at the Dow, we can see that we've had our move to the upside. Also a measured move of a little less than 61.8% of the previous impulse. So this is definitely showing the most weakness. We retraced the most, 61.8% versus only 38% on the Russell and 50% on the NASDAQ. So a lot more weakness here in the Dow. So that means... If these markets start to drop, this is the one that's likely to drop the furthest and fastest. You can see on the four hour chart, we are in a nice downtrend there with three touches on that trend line. That's a tradable trend line now. So if we fail to break above that, and you can see we've gone below 40 and can't get above 60, if we continue to push off that, tr that trend line on multiple touches, that's an opportunity to short as it's a resistance level. So we could continue to push down a little further. We've already retraced very, very deep but it doesn't mean we couldn't go further. And like I said, it's up to the leading markets. If those leading markets, consider them to be like a, a helium balloon while this is a lead weight. So that balloon is pulling the weight upward right now, but if those balloons pop, this weight's gonna fall. Looking at the 60 minute time frame, you can see that we tested this zone and now we've kind of pushed through a little bit more. It doesn't look like it wants to hold. If we're looking for a better shorting opportunity, you're looking at the 36,181 for a better shorting opportunity. That is if we get pulled up that far and then the, the NASDAQ and the Russell fall down. So I would look for a shorting opportunity there with the first target honestly being this 35, 736. Pretty good move to the downside there if we can get it. And then finally on the 15 minute chart, we may not even have to move that far to get some selling. Although we are a little bit bullish, again, going back to the, 50, the 60 minute chart, we're in a positive trend, a bullish trend right now, higher lows, higher highs. So typically you want to buy those. And if the NASDAQ continues to show bullishness, if we don't test this 36,072 first, we come down to 30, basically 36,000 first, that's a good buying opportunity. There's a nice buying pressure demand zone right there. You could go long here, target one, and then target two. 
So that's what I'm seeing. We'll kick off the markets here on Sunday evening and see what happens going into Monday. But that's what I'm looking at for the overall for the week. Pay attention mostly to the NASDAQ and the Russell to let you know when the upward moves are going to stop. You can also follow me on Twitter at TraderBDub. And I'll be giving you updates every single day during the week for trading and just giving you an idea of what's going on in those markets. If you like what you see here, uh, please let me know and go ahead and subscribe. And that way I'll be sure to bring you videos once a week on these markets. Till next time, trade safe, trade well. Everyone take care.